Golden Radio Hour. Around Dodge City and to the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Is this everything, Chester? Well, there might be more later when they finish sorting the mail. Hey, where's that telegram? Oh, what telegram? I thought I'd put it right on top. Let me take a look. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Might be important. Oh, we'll soon see. Well, it's from Bill Hickok. Up in Abilene? Yeah. Uh, what'd you say, Mr. Dillon? Teeters and Gridler headed for Dodge. Keep them there, but don't arrest them until I get there with murder witness. Or I'll write Washington all I know about you. Signed, Hickok. Oh, then Mr. Hickok's coming here, huh? Well, that's what he says. Well, how do you recognize those two men, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I expect I'll recognize them all right. Oh, you know them. Yeah, we've met. Teeters and Gridler are gunmen, Chester. The kind who kill as easy as most men shake hands. Just about as often. Too bad you can't just put them in jail. Yeah. Well, we'll start meeting the trains. There's one in at noon, sir. Good, then we'll meet it. What will we do if they are on this train, Mr. Dillon? Nothing, Chester. I'll find them later and talk to them, but not in a crowd like this. Yes, sir. You know, every time I see a train, I am just overpowered with the urge to travel. Oh? Where to? Anywhere. Anywhere but Kansas. <laughs> well, I don't think you'd like it back east any better. Why not? You just have the urge to come out west again. <laughs> I know you're kind. Mm, I suppose you're right, sir. But still, it'd be good to walk down a street that wasn't all heat and dust and that wasn't crowded with a lot of grimy men looking for trouble. And I wouldn't mind seeing some women, married women, with kids and parasols and Wait bottles. a minute, Chester. There they are. Where? They just got off the end car. Those two headed for the depot there. One of them tall? Yeah. That's Teeters in the black hat. The other's Gridler. I'll just step around the corner here and see which way they head. Yes, sir. There they are. Yeah. Looks like they're going to the Dodge house. Now, let's follow them. Yep, that's where they're going, all right. Now, let's wait here. Let them get a room, and then I'll go talk to them. But if you can't arrest them... Then I'll just try to make them feel welcome to stay in Dodge. When do you think Mr. Hickok will get here? Oh, uh, be a couple of days anyway, Chester. Uh, look, right now I want you to go back to the depot and ask the ticket agent to let me know if Teeters and Gridlers start to leave any time. You can describe them to him. All right, sir. And then go to the stage office. Yes, sir. And go to all the stables, too. If they rent or buy any horses, I want to know about it right away. I'll tell everybody. Also, tell them to keep quiet about it. I'll uh, be back at the office later, huh? Right, sir. You who 
What can I do for you, Marshal? Two men came in here just a minute ago. One of them was tall, black hat. Well? Well, what, Marshal? You were here. Did you see them? Those were gunmen. I could tell. The tall one's Teeters and the other one's Gridler. Those are the names they gave you? Uh, yes, but there'll be trouble if you try to arrest them here, Marshal. Can't you wait until they're outside in the street someplace? No. What if they're after you? I've got nothing to do with men like that, Marshal. There's no reason in the world that they... Now, just take it easy. They never heard of you, and I'm not going to arrest them. But since you're a good, helpful citizen, maybe you can tell me what room they're in. Certainly, Marshal, certainly. Number 25. Up the stairs and turn to your left. Thank you very much. your gun away, Gridler. I just came for a little talk. And make your talk, Marshal. No, I ain't polite, Gridler. Let him in. Watch him better inside, anyway. Hello, Teeters. What's on your mind, Marshal? I'm just trying to think. Last time I saw you men was in, uh... Let me see. Was it Tascosa? Never mind all that, Marshal. Why are you here? No, I heard you were in town. I thought I'd drop by and say hello. News must travel pretty fast in Dodge. We ain't been here 15 minutes, all told. Well, maybe he was expecting us, Griddle. I happened to be at the depot. I noticed you got off, so I followed you here. All right. But we're not wanted, Marshal. <laughs> Matter of fact, a judge up in Abilene just turned us loose. Wasn't no witness to that killing. While Bill tried to frame us, but didn't work. Well, that just goes to show the law's fair to everybody, doesn't it? Why'd you come here, Marshal? Just to let you know that I'm still the law in Dodge and that I don't want any trouble here. And with men of your sort, I always like to mention that. We're not looking for trouble. Good, good. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. That's a funny thing to tell us. It's an open town, Teeters. Yeah, sure, Marshal. Sure it is, yeah. And I'll treat you two just like anybody else. If you stay out of trouble, the town's yours. Anybody who starts trouble won't be us. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'll be going now, gentlemen. Oh, uh, there are some pretty sharp gamblers here. Don't let them take all of your money. Well, don't you worry about us, Marshal. So long. There was no way of figuring how long Teeters and Gridler might stay in Dodge. If they took a notion to do some gambling, it might be a week or two, or they might move on in an hour. That night, however, they were still in town, Buck and Farrow at the Oliver Ganza. Everything looked fine until Chester came into the office about 10 o'clock. They're fixing to leave, Mr. Dillon, first thing in the morning. Oh, how do you know? Jim Bunch at the stage office. He just told me they came in and paid their fare to Sharon Springs on the morning stage. Sharon Springs, huh? And then they're headed for Denver. Looks like it, sir. All right, Chester. Uh, go tell Jim that I'm going to be on that stage tomorrow, too. If he likes, I'll ride shotgun for him. One of the boys can have a little time off. I'll tell him, sir. But are you going all the way to Denver? I'll follow him all the way to San Francisco if necessary. You can tell Hickok that when he shows up. Too bad he won't be here before they leave. And it'll be another day before he can get here. But that won't be too far behind us. Uh, stage leaves at 8, right? Yes, sir. I'll be there to see you off, Mr. Dillon. Fine. We'll meet at the Dodge House for breakfast, if you like. All right, sir. The stage looks like it's all ready to go, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. I don't see Teeters and Gridler, though. They're not inside, are they? I don't think so. No, they're not here yet. Just about 8 o'clock. They should be here. Well, it doesn't matter, Chester. If they've changed their minds, it's all to the good anyway. Want me to go ask Jim Bunch if he's heard from him, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, no. Let's just wait here. Mm. Oh, say, I forgot to tell you. 
Jim said the regular shotgun messenger has to go up to Sharon Springs anyway, but to thank you just the same. No. Good. Chester. Yes, sir? Look, up at the other end of the plaza there. Coming this way. Well, I declare. It's Sam. Yeah. Now what are they up to, I wonder? Well, they can't be taking the stage if they're horseback. No. Looks to me like they're fixed for a long ride, too. Sure does, Mr. Dillon. You're up early, Marshal. Yeah. So are you, Teeters. It's cooler in the morning. Uh, for traveling, it is. So long, Marshal. What's the matter? Did you lose all your money last night? Yeah. Next time, we'll follow your advice. So long. Will we go after him? Uh, Chester, you stay here and explain things to Wild Bill. I'll be on their trail. As soon as they're out of sight, I'll get my horse. You can tell Jim I won't be taking the stage. All right, sir. I'll leave as clear a trail for Hickok as I can. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. We will return to the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... Young women are needed to enroll as student nurses and to take their places as graduate nurses in an ever-expanding field where opportunity unlimited awaits. Older women should seek careers as practical nurses where fine living and fine working conditions are in prospect. Ask at any hospital at the nurse's registry desk or at any qualified school of nursing. And now, the second act of Gunsmoke. did my best to stay out of Teeters and Gridler's sight, but if they had suspicions of being followed and were watching their back trail, they'd have known I was there, all right. The land was flat, and we frequently crossed great patches of powder-dried dirt that smoked the air with dust under the horses' feet. After an hour, they began to swing slowly north, and by noon, it was clear that for some reason they were riding in a great half-circle They'd left Dodge headed west, and sure enough, just after sundown, they rode back into town from the east. I waited until dark, then came in. Put my horse up. The office was empty, so I walked up to Delmonico's, where I found Doc having supper. Oh, Matt! Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you, Doc. Oh, you look hungry enough to even eat this food. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a long time since breakfast, Doc. Well, a man ought to eat three meals regular, Matt. And you'll get run down if you don't. <laughs> yeah, sure, Doc. Only sometimes you have to eat when you can. Oh, I told you have a hard day, Matt. <clears throat> yeah, I've been riding, Doc. Riding around in circles. Oh, is that what the government pays you for? Oh, I'd like to have your job. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure of that, Doc. It isn't always this easy. Well, I know, Matt. Just told me. What happened to you? You lose them? No, I didn't lose them. As a matter of fact, they're coming in here right now. Huh? What do you mean they're coming? Those two? Yeah. They're pretty hard-looking fellows. They are. Evening, Marshal. Oh, hello, Teeters. Griddler. Marshal. This is Dr. Adams, gentlemen. How are you? How are you, Doc? How are you? Well, what's on your mind? You are, Marshal. What? That was you trailing us all day, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Why? (laughs) I didn't want you to get lost. That's a lie. Then let's say that I didn't want you to get into any trouble. You going to tell us what it's all about, Marshal? Well, you're not exactly the most reputable citizens in Kansas, and I just wanted to have an eye on you, that's all. You sure do. Because it's like I told you, you keep out of trouble and you're welcome to stay here. Just remember one thing, Marshal. There's two of us. And next time you follow us, you might not come back. (laughs) 
Well, taking chances like that's part of my job, Mr. Teeters. That's a poor job, then. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think so, too. Come on, Teeters, let's get out of here. Yeah. Well, they're not very polite, are they? No, but they're smart. Smart enough to figure something's wrong, anyway. Well, you think they might bolt, Matt? That uh, depends on how smart they really are, Doc. Right now, they're so curious, they might stay around just to see what it's all about. Oh, Mr. Dillon? Oh, hello, Chester. Oh, Pull up a chair. Mm -hmm. Pull up a chair, Chester. I won't have time. Hey, we better get right over to the depot. Oh, why? What's happened? Well, sir, I saw them ride back into town. The first thing they did was go to the depot and ask about a train. Oh, were you there? No, sir. The agent came and told me, told me like he'd promised. The train goes at 7.30, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And it's just about that now. I've been looking everywhere for you. Uh, Doc, if that waiter ever does come around, tell him to hold a steak for me, will you? I might just be back for it. Uh, sure, Matt. Yes, sir. And good luck. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Come on, Chester. Are you going to go on the train with him, Mr. Dillon? No. Hickok's sure to be here in the morning, Chester. If I can keep them off this train tonight, I doubt they'll try anything else till tomorrow. Yeah, but you can't arrest them. Yeah, I know. Well, then, I'll how, just how you... face them off at Chester. So keep your head up. Yes, sir. Now, there they are. Come on. You come just to say goodbye, Marshal? Not exactly, Peters. Oh? You, uh, you can take the train tomorrow if you like, but, uh, not this one. Why tomorrow? Well, I've got orders to keep you in sight till then. Orders from who? It doesn't matter. But you have your choice. You can have the run of Dodge tonight or you can spend it in jail. You know, you talk pretty loose for just one man, Marshal. Your friend there doesn't look like a gunman. Well, now, you can't always tell by looks, mister. I can't. You said you didn't want trouble, Marshal, but you sure starting it. There won't be any trouble. You do what I tell you. And if we don't... I'll kill the first one of you that moves for that train. You can die that way, Marshal. Maybe. But you won't both get on that train. Gridler. You know me. You know I'll do it. We can still make it, Gridler. No. It's not worth it. We can go tomorrow. All right. Marshal, tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, sure, sure. Tomorrow it'll be different. <laughs> Chester and I met the noon train next day. But as I'd figured, Hickok didn't get off it. I questioned the man who rode the baggage car, and sure enough, Wild Bill and his witness had hidden out there the whole trip. As soon as the crowd left the depot, we walked down to the car, crawled under it, and pounded on the door on the other side. Who is it? It's Dillon, Bill. Open up. Jump up, man. Come on, Chester. Oh, yeah. uh, Matt, how are you? Oh, fine, Bill, fine. Oh, uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Uh, Chester? Sam, come over here. This is my witness, Sam Trimble. Uh, howdy, Hi, Mr. Trimble. Trimble. Are you still here, Matt? Yeah, but we better move fast. Matt, that judge up at Abilene's crazy, but he's still the judge. And he says Trimble here has to identify Teeters and Gridler before I arrest him this time. But, Bill, they can't be tried twice for the same crime. I know that, Matt, but I'm after them for a second murder they did. I'd suggest we just go kill them, but I've been waiting a long time to see these two hung, and by glory, I'm going to do it. Well, you will, if you're lucky. Uh, tell me, Mr. Trumbull, do these men know you on sight? Well, I'll tell you how it was, Marshal. I, I was in the stable where I worked, over in Abilene, that is, and a fellow come in for his horse, and I went to get it for him. I heard some shooting, and then two men ran right past me. I got a good look at them, all right. They, they just killed that fellow, too. You mean you don't know Teeters and Gridler? I never heard of them, Matt. There's no pictures of them I know of, but he can identify them when he sees them. 
Yeah, sure, but what about them? Will they recognize you, Mr. Trimble? Gosh, I don't know, Marshal. I hope not. They'd kill me on sight, wouldn't they? I hadn't thought of that. Well, you just do what we tell you to, and you'll come to no harm, Trimble. Bill and I are a fair match for those two. If they start any trouble, we'll be on them so fast they'll die on their feet. Taking a terrible chance. I, I hadn't thought of that. Easy, Trimble, easy. An hour from now, we'll have them in jail with their teeth pulled. I sure hope so, but uh, how are you going to do it? Just go find them, that's all. As soon as we get them locked up, I'll buy you the biggest steak you ever ate, Trimble. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I took Hickok and Trimble over to the Texas Trail where we decided we'd wait while Chester located Teeters and Gridler. Then we'd just walk in on them and get it over with fast. I introduced the two men to Kitty and we ordered a couple of drinks for Trimble who was getting jumpier by the minute. What are you two heroes doing? Getting this poor man drunk enough to fight him? <laughs> Not exactly, Miss Kitty. He just lacks faith in us, that's all. Ah. I wouldn't have come if I'd thought about it. I sure would. Look, Trimble. It isn't often a man has both mine and Matt Dillon's guns behind him. You're as safe as you'd be in church. I don't go to church. Uh, here, Mr. Trimble. Have another drink, huh? Uh, I, I will in a minute. I'm going out back first. <laughs> Whatever you're up to, it's making him mighty nervous. Yeah. Well, I'll admit he usually leads a quieter life. He'll brag big, though, once he's back in Abilene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me, Bill, do you plan to stay in Abilene long? Oh, I don't know, Matt. Charlie Utter keeps talking to me about Deadwood. Oh, it's as dusty up in Deadwood as it is in Kansas. Yeah, I know, Miss Kitty, but Charlie thinks some of that dust is made of gold. Ah. <laughs> Hey, well, What's that? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I'll go with you, man. All right, stay in here, everybody. It was Peters and Riddler. I was just crossing the street and saw them running out of the alley there. All right, come on. There he is. Trimble? They shot me. I was going to run away. And he got scared and ran right into him. Yeah, we shouldn't have let him alone at all. They said they saw me with you, Mr. Hickok. And they said that that's all they needed to know. And then they shot me. Chester, go get the doc. Hurry. Yes, sir. Tell me, Trimble. They were the men... Who killed that fellow in Abilene? You recognize him all right? No. No. I never saw these two before. It wasn't them. I... What? what? I knew I shouldn't have come. I... I got killed for nothing. I... Tremble. Tremble. That's no use, Bill. Yeah. He got killed for nothing, all right. They must have figured he was a witness to some murder they did commit. Well, anyway, they'll hang for Trimble now. Let's find him before they get out of town, Matt. We'll find him even if they do. Hickok and I walked out of the alley and into the plaza. There were a couple of citizens who'd heard the shooting and had seen Teeters and Gridler run out of the alley. Told us that they'd gone into the Dodge house and we followed. From the look on the clerk's face as we went past him and up the stairs, I knew that they were in their room. When we reached it, Bill stood on one side of the door and I on the other. Think they'll fight, man? Well, let's ask them. I told you they'd follow us, Peters. Well, we're trapped sure. Shut up, I said. And they got us to the street on the line. Open the door. Throw your guns out. There's no use trying to fight. There's no use in hanging neither, Marshal. You can just take us the best way you can. No. Our chance hanging. We got off once. Can't you get away from that door? I've listened to you enough. 
I ain't facing Dillon and Hickok both now. Hey, Hold your pants here, let's go. Peters, you shouldn't have... Oh! Expected this. Saved us doing it, maybe. Riddler lost his nerve. Blast him. Shooting was too good for these two. I wanted to see him hung. Well, things don't always work out, Bill. Well, they sure don't. Not lately, anyway. Matt, I think I'll go up to Deadwood with Charlie Otter right soon, after all. Maybe I can find me a little peace and quiet. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John McIntyre, Lawrence Dobkin, John Daner, Joe Duvall, and Harry Bartell. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNear is Doc. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Many of the war orphans of Korea have never known peace or plenty. Their lives have gone from bad to worse. Now their future is in our hands. Without help, they cannot live. We can send them food through CARE, the American Package Sending Relief Agency. Send your contribution to CARE's local office or to CARE New York or CARE Los Angeles. This is Roy Rowan. This is the CBS Radio Network. Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Ma, 
mind if I sit here a while, Marshal? <laughs> of course not. Sit down, Billy. Hey, you look worried, Billy. Boy like you shouldn't look worried. I'm 21. That's a man's age, isn't it, Chester? Oh, sure. 21's pretty old, Billy. Old enough for Frogmouth Kate, anyway. Every time I come to town, that woman won't give me a minute's peace. Well, maybe she's sweet on you, Billy. Sweet on me. <laughs> look at her at the bar over there. She'll come to and miss me pretty soon. Old enough to be my mother. Well, then why do you stay here? Why don't you go over to the Longhorn or someplace? Oh, Kate's all right when she's sober. Just when she gets drunk, she's such a nuisance. Well, she sure looks drunk now. She is. And when she's like this, there's no worse woman in the whole world. I could kill her when she gets like this. <laughs> Somebody's always going to kill somebody around here. Oh, that's that's just a way of talking, Marshal. <laughs> Yeah. I hate to tell you, Billy, but I think Frogmouth Kate has spotted you. Yeah, I knew she would. She gets lonesome awful fast, that woman. So that's where you went, Billy. Leaving me all alone? Shame on you, honey. I gotta catch my breath once in a while, Kate. You can catch your breath with me, honey. Not with Marshal Dillon and Chester and all the rest of them. Now, nah, Kate, take it easy. Oh, take it easy. You and me will take it easy in St. Louis, Billy boy. And quit talking about St. Louis all the time. I ain't about to go to St. Louis. I'm broke right here in Dodge. I got the money, Billy. Almost I got it. Almost enough. <laughs> you and me, huh, baby? Oh, Kate. Why don't you pick on somebody who can at least buy you a few drinks? Well, they've been buying me drinks. I don't care about them anyway. Let's get married, Billy boy. What do you say, huh? You and me. See what I mean, Marshal? Ain't she awful? <laughs> <laughs> well, she likes you, Billy. Sure. We're a couple of real lovebirds. Yeah. Hey, now stop that. <laughs> let, let go of me, Pete. I'll break your head open. Ah, uh, you cute Billy lover boy. Joe, cut it out. Uh, well, if you'll excuse us, we better be moving on. Uh... <clears throat> Chester? Mm -hmm. Well, all right, Chester. Yes, sir. So long, Billy. Kate? Now, you never mind them, Billy boy. They're just a couple of crooks like everybody else except you, sweetie. <laughs> you and me, huh, honey? Poor Billy. <laughs> well, he's got to learn somehow. I suppose. <sighs> well, the town seems pretty quiet, Chester. I think I'll go to bed. Good idea, Mr. Dillon. I'll sleep in the office tonight. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Good night, sir. Sir, open up. Oh, oh, well, just a minute, Chester. Oh, what is it, Chester? There's been a shooting, sir, in that room in the house next to the Alpha Ganza. What? Oh, well, I'll get dressed. Come on inside. It's been raining a little, Mr. Dillon. Oh, good. Light that lamp there, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. They sent for Doc, and he woke me up on his way out. He know what it was all about? No, sir. He just said it was in that room in house. Yeah. What time is it, anyway? Oh, it'll be daylight soon. Must be about 4.30. 4.30. It's pretty late at night for a gunfight, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. There. There. All right, Chester. I'm ready. Blow the lamp out. Huh? Yes, sir. Sure helped. Wouldn't it be fine if it stayed this cool all day, Mr. Dillon? No, you'd be lost if you couldn't complain about the heat, Chester. Well, I'd be willing to think of something else. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Uh, 
Maud Torvester still runs this rooming house, doesn't she? Last I heard, she did. Yeah. Hey, Marshal. Down here, Marshal Dillon. It's Maud Torvester, all right. Hello, Ma. Right in here, Marshal. Who was it, Ma? Frogmouth Kate. She got shot. Kate? It's no use, Matt. She hasn't said a word, and she's not likely to now. Yeah. Who did it, Ma? Oh, I was asleep, Marshal. Heard a shot and come right down. I sent everybody else back to bed and told them to stay there. You don't know who did it, then? He must have jumped out that window right there. You go get him, Marshal. He's got a head start already. A uh, who, Ma? Well, that kid, Billy Daunt. Must have been. Well, why do you think it was Billy? Because he was drinking with her all night over at the Alifraganza, that's why. Been with her all yesterday, I heard, too. Couldn't be nobody else. He stole her money, too. How do you know he did, Ma? Oh, she showed me once. She kept it right under the mattress there, and it's gone. She had quite a lot of it saved up, too. Everybody knew that. She's planned on going back to St. Louis with it. She wanted Billy to go with her, but I guess he couldn't wait, the little rat. I sure hope I see him hung. Uh, uh, Chester, start looking for him. I'll join you in a few minutes. Yes, sir. I'll go out back first. She's dead, man. Oh, that poor girl. It's a wonder she lived this long, being shot so close up. She didn't say anything, not a... Not a word, man. She was unconscious the whole time. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, chip in toward Barry and her doc, seeing as how she was sort of broke when she died. Nonsense. Kate was a good girl, and I'll be responsible for her getting a fine burial. Finest there is, but you catch that devil Billy Daunt, Marshal. Don't you let him get away. We'll find him, Ma. Well, you sure better. Well, let me know if you hear anything. I'll see you later, Doc. Sure, Matt. Chester and I spent the next couple of hours looking for Billy Daunt, but nobody had seen him since he and Kate had left the Elifraganza together the night before. We did learn, however, that he'd been riding for Luke Atkins, and since it was our only lead, we decided to go out to the ranch and have a talk with Luke. It was mid-morning when we rode up to the main house, and at first the place looked deserted. Anyway, it's cool here under the cottonwood. Maybe Luke's out on the prairie somewhere. Well, if he's smart, he's keeping away from the sun right there in the house. Uh, oh. Now, uh, leave the horses, Chester. They'll stand. All right, you... Who's there? It's Matt Dillon, Luke. Oh, I just rest a little, Marshal. Hello, Chester. Hello, Luke. It's cooler out here. Sit down. My gracious, what happened to you? Does it look bad? Yeah, bad enough to skip church this Sunday, Luke. Black eye, huh? I ain't got a mirror. Your jaw's swollen, too. Fool kid, I never saw him like that before. He must have been drunk. Billy Daunt? He's been spending his pay in Dodge the last couple of days and... Say, is that why you're here, Marshal? Billy get in trouble there? Maybe. What'd he beat you up for, Luke? Why, well, he just rode in here this morning early and said he needed a better horse than his and wanted my buckskin gilding. He was all excited and I started to argue with him. He jumped me before I knew what was happening. Knocked me out for a minute, I guess. He's gone then, huh? Sure he's gone. I came up to the house here and got my rifle and watched him go. Funny thing, though, he didn't leave right away. Well, what do you mean? He fooled around down there in the barn for most an hour. I don't know what he was up to, but I just sat here on the porch with my rifle in case he got any more crazy ideas. He finally rode off, though, headed west. Well, we're after him, Luke. Billy in bad trouble, Marshal? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm sorry to hear that. He's always been a pretty good boy. Where are the rest of your men, Luke? Still in Dodge, Marshal, spending their pay. Well, you take care of that eye. So long. Goodbye, Marshal. 
Chester. Bye, Luke. Well, there's not much question about Billy now, is there? Yeah, there sure isn't. Start looking for tracks, Chester. Yes, sir, I have been. The ground's still damp from the rain last night. We ought to cut this trail easy. I don't see anything. Now, look there, over there. Those are fresh tracks. Yeah, they're fresh, all right, but they lead toward the ranch, not away from it. Yeah. Well, let's follow them anyway, Chester. What? Come on, let's ride. Chester figured either Billy was riding backwards or I was crazy. But he stopped arguing after a couple of hours, and we rode in silence the rest of the day. Long about dusk, I figured we were catching up with him, but we couldn't afford to lose the trail. And when night came, we made camp. Next morning at daylight, we went on. By noon, it was clear Billy hadn't taken any rest at all. A couple of hours later, we began to wonder how much longer his horse could hold up. This is the doggondest hunt I was ever on. Billy just isn't very smart, that's all. Well, I must be half crazy, beating up Luke Atkins like that. When a man's in a panic, he'll do almost anything, Chester. Well, you'd think he'd at least have sense enough to rest his horse now and then. And it'll be easier for us if he doesn't. Chester. Hmm? Look up ahead there. Hey, by heaven, it's a horse. Yeah, huh. That's a buckskin. It's not saddled. There isn't a thing around, sir. This side of that bluff, anyway. The bluff's too far away for an ambush. The horse doesn't look very good, does he? He's not even eating. Yeah. Oh. He may never be any good again. That fool kid. Well, he can't be very far away. Unless he's found another horse. Look at the buckskin's hooves, Chester. Why, he isn't even shod. Yeah, Billy pulled his shoes when he left him. He sure made a mistake, though. What do you mean? That's what he was doing in Luke's barn, putting the shoes on backwards. Now he's pulled them. He wouldn't fool anybody. All it did was help wear his horse out even more. He had me fooled for a while. Anyway, we'll catch him pretty soon now. Well, his tracks lead toward the bluff there. Probably into that clump of trees. Well, if that's where he is, he can see us. All right, we'll ride in from different directions. You can't get both of us. Okay, sir. A half hour later, Chester and I had reached the trees about the same time. And without being shot at... There was a spring there and a tiny cabin, deserted. One set of footprints led up to the place and two sets led away from it. Billy had taken whoever lived there along with him. Figuring there wasn't too much hurry now, we watered our horses and let them breathe for a while. The way I figured, Mr. Dillon, Billy was here about dawn this morning. Well, he won't be far away, not more than 15 or 20 miles at the most. Unless he's found a horse. Well, that's why he's carrying his saddle, isn't he? Yeah. Only Billy isn't carrying the saddle. What? He's saving his strength. Whoever was in this cabin is doing the hard work. You mean Billy took him along just to carry his saddle? Yeah, he found himself a pack horse, Chester. Mr. Dillon, I'm getting to have less use for Billy Don't every minute. Come on, let's ride him down. Before it's too late for this poor fellow, whoever he is. All right, Chester. Well, our horses are in good shape. We ought to catch him in a few hours. I sure hope so. 
Uh, you take the side of the trail, Chester. Track about ten yards behind me, huh? All right, sir. All right, let's go. Don't bother to watch the trail anymore, Chester. It's headed right for that Nestor's shack there. So keep your eyes open. You think Billy might still be there? Yeah, he might be. Oh. Maybe he's inside, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Let's spread out a little. All right, sir. Now, wait a minute. It's the door. Who are you? Are, uh, are you alone, ma'am? You the law? I'm Marshal Dillon from Dodge. You're too late, Marshal. You mean he's gone? He's gone. Take a look around at the side, Marshal. Right around there. Go on, look. Both of you. Goodness, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. He was killed with a knife. Yes, sir, he sure was. That your husband, ma'am? Yes. I'm sorry it happened, but if it's any comfort to you, we'll catch that boy. I promise you that. Don't matter now. Uh, he had another man with him. Where's he? Inside. I've been trying to fix him up. He was near dead when they got here. Poor old Clabe. Clabe? He's 75 years old, Marshal, and that's too old to be used like an animal. Rotten kid. I'd, uh, like to talk to him, ma'am. Come on inside. It's all right, Clave. Marshal Dillon from Dodge. We've known Clave for ten years, Marshal, ever since we've been here. Never hurt nobody. Sure. Uh, can you talk a little, Clave? Uh, I'll be all right, Marshal. I'm just kind of wore out. Twenty miles packing a saddle in this weather. Fast, too. Had me walk fast. How long ago did the boy leave here? Three, four hours, Marshal. Took our mule, but he won't get far. Oh? Why not? Mule's too old. After ten miles, just quit. Your husband tried to stop him, is that it? Yeah. Got mad when he saw what the boy had done to Clay. And the boy knifed him. Never gave him a chance. He's wild crazy. He sure is, Marshal. Scared, too. I never saw anybody so scared. He's in a real panic, Clay. But how come he used a knife? That doesn't sound right. It's all he's got, that's why. What? He ain't armed, except for that knife. He doesn't have a gun? He took our rifle, but there's no ammunition for it. We run out. Took it anyway. But when he came to your place, Clay, didn't he have a six gun? No, sir. Just that knife, that's all he had. I got an old Navy pistol, but it's busted. I ain't been able to get it fixed. I sure don't understand it, Mr. Dillon. He's like a wild animal, that's what he is. He oughtn't to be loose. He won't be for long, ma'am. Clay, I hope you'll be all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just plumb wore out. Clay's going to stay right here, Marshal. Too old to be living by himself anyway. Good. Uh, well, we'll be going now, ma'am, but uh, we'll bury your husband first. Now, if you'll just show us where you'd like to have the grave. Thank you, Marshal. The woman wanted her husband buried right where he'd fallen. So we dug the grave there and laid him into it. 
she watched, straight-faced, without a tear. Then she said goodbye and went back into the house. It was just after sunset when we caught up with Billy. Just as the woman had said, the mule had gone ten miles and quit. Billy saw us coming. Started running across the prairie on foot. His panic had made him as nearly brainless as a man could get. Look at him, Mr. Dillon. Did you ever see anything like it? He's still got a knife, Chester. Hold it, Billy. You can't get away. Right up on the other side of him, Chester. Yes, sir. You've run far enough, Billy. you have to shoot me, Marshal. No, we won't. Take your rope down, Chester. Good idea, sir. All right, Chester, let's rope him. We both got him. Now stay on your horse, Chester. Just keep your rope tight. No, hold, hold. I'll cut you, Marshal. Let go the knife, no. Billy. All right, Chester, slack up a little. All right, drop your rope, Chester. I'll tie him up with no, it. No, you stay. Go me. Hey, you're a wild one, Billy. You'll never get me back. Not alive, you won't. Never. I think we will. Let's make him walk back, Mr. Dillon. I won't walk. You can drag me, but I won't walk. Now we'll throw him across your horse, Chester. You and I can ride double till we make camp. Maybe that'll calm him down. That Billy won't eat a thing, Mr. Dillon. He's just been crouched over there looking like a cornered animal ever since I woke him up this morning. Still pretty spooky, huh? Mm, he sure is. Well, uh, let's go talk to him. There, uh... There's some bacon over there, Billy, if you want it. Aren't you... Hungry, Billy? I didn't kill her, Marshal. Oh? You've been running awful hard for an innocent man. I didn't kill her, I tell you. Uh, we'll let the judge decide that, Billy. I was waiting for her outside, and I heard the shot. I went around, and her window was open, and she was lying there. I didn't kill her. Then why did you run, Billy? I knew you'd be after me. I had to get away. I ain't going back to Dodge. I ain't going. Yeah. All right, let's get packed up, Chester. How is he, Chester? He just keeps standing there looking out the cell bars. But he did drink some of the coffee I left him. Uh, I don't know, Chester. Sometimes I think just the act of running itself makes a man afraid. The more he runs, the more panicked he gets. Anyway, it ain't healthy. A young boy like Billy? Well, maybe you'll come out of it in time. Morning, Marshal. Yes, sir. Morning, Mr. Green. Now, you're up early, Mr. Green. Well, I heard you brought Billy Dawn in last night, Marshal, so I figured I'd better turn this over to you. A six-gun? Who's this? Is? Yeah, it's Billy's gun, Marshal. I've been fixing it for him. Billy's gun? That's right, Mr. Dillon. Billy didn't have a gun, remember? How long have you had it, Mr. Green? Oh, he brought in the first day he came to town, Marshal. A cylinder was loose, been shaving lead. It's okay now. I fix it fine. You've had it all the time? Yes, sir. I, I was just keeping it for him until I heard he'd been arrested. I see. Uh, well, thanks, Mr. Green. I'll see that you're paid for your work. Oh, sure, Marshal. That's all right. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Green. Hmm? Looks like Billy was telling the truth. Yeah. You sure can't convict a man of a shooting if he didn't have a gun. No, sir. 
But there's that nester he killed. Yeah. And all for nothing. Yes, sir. Well, Chester, it's pretty hopeless now, but let's see if we can find out who did kill Kate. Probably just some thief heard about her money. Yeah. Probably. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Harley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNear is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.